Penn State football is desperate for offensive linemen, and more specifically, offensive tackles. And that's why we're taking a look at Drew Shelton, commit for the class of 2022 for Penn State football on today's T. Frank's Film Room. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr, and Penn State has been after Drew Shelton for a long time now. If you had followed Blue White Illustrated's coverage of recruiting, you've seen me break down his film going all the way back to, I think, his sophomore season. So he accepted an offer from Penn State early on and has been pursued for quite a while. And when we get into the film, you'll see exactly why. I'm super excited to talk to you about Drew Shelton's game because he makes me feel smart about the things that I'm looking for in, in a football player. But first, let's introduce you to the prospect himself. This is Drew Shelton, on three national 225th player in the nation, 18th overall offensive tackle, sixth uh, player in the state of Pennsylvania. And by the way, so we've been going over these numbers uh, on a lot of these film rooms. That is the on three ranking. There is the on three consensus as well, which takes into account every recruiting service and then gives an average of all of those evenly weighted. So with that in mind, if you ever want to see those things, uh, you can go to on three.com, check out the database. It's uh, really, really cool. And it just got started. It's being grown and developed as we speak. But on that particular on three consensus, he's the 128th player in the nation. He's the seventh ba best tackle in the nation and uh, the third player in the state of Pennsylvania. So a little bit of a difference there. But with that on three consensus, you get a good uh, broad sense of how good Drew Shelton is. And I wanted to give you that because a couple of guys we've talked about have top 100 top 125 profiles in that but they're slightly lower in the on three database so drew shelton and the reason i like him and the reason that he is a really uh, highly thought of offensive line prospect is because he has a complete game physically um if you've listened to me or if you've read any of what i do for blue white illustrated i'm really 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 all about flexibility and mobility in football players. Because if you're stiff, eventually someone's going to expose you as an athlete. You can have a really good profile as a fast, linear football player, but football is played in every single direction, especially along the offensive line. If you can't get to players on the second level and you keep whiffing, that's a part of the Penn State problem in the run game, that's going to show up because you're not agile enough, you're not mobile enough, to go get those football players on the second level. And Drew Shelton, whoo, buddy, his pad level is some of the best I've ever seen. He is, and again, when I say a complete football player, I mean there are no weaknesses in his athletic profile, in my opinion. Look at this right here. Look at that. I'm going to roll this back again because I want to watch that again. Watch his first step. Forward, not up. And drives, gets underneath the pad level, and pushes players out of the way. That is how you develop pad level. Look at this right here. This is a great uh, all-22 view of what he's able to do. Look how flat his back is. And it's not that he's rolling down into it. It's not that he has some sort of cheat code to get there where he's stiff in some area. He is a flexible athlete throughout his frame. Because look at his hips. They're even. They're square and they're forward. They're not rotated down. They're not up. He's not crouching. He's just, that's what you want. That's exactly what you want from a football player to look like for an offensive lineman. And look at the results. That is what you get with good pad level. You get drive blocking. And again, here is a defender. Look at where his pads are compared to players that are shorter than he is. Six, four and a half. 275 pounds, and he's lower than his opponents who are not nearly that big. This is the building block of an elite football player along the offensive line. You, you, this is the hardest thing for big players to master outside of the speed and agility necessary to play those positions. Again, look at this. It's just, it's, it's over and over again. Textbook. Look where he is. This is a, a lot of people call this an athletic position. I call this a predatory position because look at him. He looks like an animal springing on its prey. And that is what the running back is in this situation. Bang, into the backfield on his own play. He's able to get the tackle for loss. Impact play as a defender. I think based on that, I would, I would recruit him as a defensive tackle too. You know, he's got the profile. He's got the size and the strength to be a difference maker along either line. Penn State, they see him as a tackle, and I totally understand why because of that pad level and that drive. When you have those things, and he has, and I'll show you here in a second, really, really 
well-developed natural strength. Not the biggest guy in the world, only 275. But the way he moves people off the ball is exemplary. Again, low pad level. Look at it. I could use these as the example of his pad level. But the effect of it is he gets lower than smaller people and drives them into the back. Here's, a man, here's straight man blocking. He's got to put this guy into the end zone. And he puts this guy in the end zone on his back. I actually got a little bored watching him just destroy kids at the high school football level because it's all the same. It's all him with great technique, walking over people. Low pad level, man. I love this. Drive blocking, combo blocking, zone blocking, anything you want from him, Drew Shelton can do. Watch him on this one. This is uh, able to combo block, get to the linebacker on the second level. High school athletes, yes. But the technique he's using here is what we're looking at. The ability to repeat it time and time again. He's a well-schooled run blocker. And that is a hard thing to find. And one thing, as you may have noticed, Penn State struggled to develop amongst the guys that they're the athletes they've recruited and tried to instill all of that in. If there's one theme, and, and we're going to be talking a little about the other players in this class, and I, I usually try to keep these particular conversations about just the athlete we're talking about. But it's a larger context for Penn State football. The guys that they have recruited previously have not had this profile of a dominant run blocker. Sure, they may have been flexible. Sure, they may have had that low pad level. But what did they do with it? None of them had the nastiness, the tenacity, the drive, and, and just mean. Drew Shelton is a mean offensive lineman. And that sort of thing is going to get him very far at the next level. On top of the fact that I said he's a complete athlete. There's no sort of athleticism he lacks as an offensive lineman. And that's where I get excited. When you see that pad level, you see the power he has, and then his ability to go out and get in space. This is a pull block on a pin and pull where he's getting out in space. And watch this. He gets the first guy, sure. Then he gets another guy. And we'll just watch him run. I just like watching linemen run. And when you can do that as an offensive lineman, you are a rare, rare player. Again, here he, has, he, he is out in space leading the play. Now, this target is a small moving target for him, and he hits it. The running back doesn't make a big play, but he makes a play. Here he is, uh, defensive end, being read by the quarterback. He's in space. He's got to make a decision, and he collapses and gets the tackle for loss on a read option. That's the sort of skill you have with Drew Shelton. And then here's just a conventional block on the second level. How nice is that to look at, Penn State football fans? I'll even give it to you again. Watch that. Linebacker, second level, he kicks them out. Great job. Here again, another second level block, the quickness to get there, and then the ability to hit and drive out of the play. Everything you're looking for, right there. Next thing is, and this is again what we talked about, quarterbacks and their issues of playing in certain systems in high school. Downingtown plays a field system where he's always on the field side. So he flips between right tackle and left tackle. They run a run heavy, 90% run, I'd say. So it's hard finding really good examples of his pass protection. And if there's one area where I do have questions, it's not, I showed you the athleticism. It's not about the athleticism. It's just about what's his technique? What's the, what's the learning curve going to be like for him at the next level? So here's an example of, what I don't think is going to translate is, as a pass blocker, you're not going to be throwing guys into the ground. This might be on a slide block where he doesn't have anyone to block, and then he goes and attacks his guy. So that part, I think, is is not really translatable of a player who's playing pass protection like a, like a, uh, like a, like a run blocker. And in this situation, I want to show you this one again. This defensive end he's playing against is probably 5'8". So really great job of low pad level, but he's basically crouching to block him. And I, this isn't translatable. A lot of these things you aren't going to see going forward. This one is almost the, the closest we're going to find here of translatable pass protection skills. And I think just from a technique point, he's a little loopy. He doesn't have really great, uh, I'd say, sharp pass protection. He doesn't have that typewriter look with his feet. A little bit loopy, a little bit lopy. He's never in trouble. He's never beaten. It's just about what is he going to have to work on at the next level. But with that level of athleticism, dedication, tenacity, there's nothing you don't, there's nothing missing. The only question is going to be, and again, I bring up the other players in the class of 2022 20, uh, as 
a reference. Of all of the tackle prospects that are listed as tackles, he is six four and a half. That is below the acceptable threshold traditionally of a tackle prospect. So is he a left tackle? Is he a guard? He's going to be good either way, but the question then becomes, do the other guys rise to the level of kicking him inside? Uh, some of the players like uh, Malik McDeal or Andre Roy, they're still trying to add more tackles over time in this class. Do any of those guys force him to the interior, or is he the best left tackle of this group? From an athletic profile, and even from a length, he's got long arms for his frame, so I'm not necessarily concerned with that. It's just, do you have anything better or more ideal? You're going to have a hard time finding that, but long-term with his, his future potential, probably if, you, if you're projecting him beyond college into the next level, his best-case scenario, a little bit like Ryan Bates previously at Penn State, he's going to play tackle in college, but he might have to kick inside at guard at, at the NFL level. But, of course, we're getting ahead of ourselves, and I can't help that when I see a truly elite athlete is then projecting way beyond what's reasonable. But for right now, Drew Shelton phenomenal offensive tackle prospect for Penn State football. They got a real one in Shelton. And it'll just be a question of how quickly can he get up from 275 to 285 or 95 and be able to contribute from that particular standpoint. Because he's not going to dominate everybody at the at the college level the way he did at the high school level. Mass is going to matter. He's got the natural strength. He's got the natural run blocking itch. Now it is all about... How much good weight can he pack on that frame? And what is his upper ceiling when it comes to that physical potential? Which, if it's based on anything I've seen so far, his growth development pattern, I think it's pretty good. That'll do it today for Drew Shelton and his film eval in T. Frank's Film Room. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Make sure you subscribe to the Blue White Illustrated YouTube page so you don't miss any more Penn State prospects as they commit into the class of 2022 and beyond.